Well, welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us tonight. We had Sunday dinner today, and I served spaghetti squash as a side dish. This is so easy and simple. I'm going to show you how to do it. Here are the ingredients I used. This is just one recipe for spaghetti squash. You can do almost anything with it, but we'll start with this one. Let's get cooking. So here's the star of today's show. This is a spaghetti squash. This is medium to small, uh, probably weighs about three to four pounds. And there are many different ways to cook them. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Uh, I just cut a couple of slits in here and it's really, really hard, so be careful. Uh, but just enough to puncture the skin. I have heard that they'll explode. I've actually never seen one explode. And I cook mine whole. Some people cut them in half first, but you see how hard it is. Uh, and to me, it's easier just to cook them whole. Uh, if you want to save the seeds, you're going to need to cut them in half because they'll be cooked and you don't want to save them then. See, I put a number of holes in here, uh, just enough to pierce the skin. And I'm going to just put it on a cookie sheet with aluminum foil. And I'm going to bake this. I can't tell you exactly how long. I'll show you how to test if it's done. But in a 375 oven, and it's going to be at least an hour and 15 minutes. So after an hour and 15 minutes, we're going to test it. Could be as much as an hour and 30, but you don't want to overcook it. And if the knife goes in easily, then it's done. If you overcook it, then you lose your spaghetti texture. So I would start with an hour and 15 minutes and then test it. If it's not done, I would do another 15 minutes until it's the right texture. I always let it cool about an hour. And I've got on gloves because even after an hour, it's still going to be pretty hot inside. So you can cut it in either direction. The other direction gives you a little bit longer noodles, but it's a little bit hard to handle. So I just cut it in this direction. Uh, and you can see inside, there's still the seeds that have to be cleaned away. And right below the seeds, under the seeds, is going to be a little mush. But you can tell it's done uh, because the uh, spaghetti will pull away with your finger and you can fluff it. So this is pretty easy. Uh, I use a grapefruit spoon, but you can just use a regular spoon. You can scoop it out with your hands. It's just kind of hot. And as you pull the seeds, you want to be careful not to pull away too many of the spaghetti strands. But there are some strands in there you do want to get rid of. And, and you'll know them because they're running in a different direction. And they'll also be right under the seeds, a little mushy stuff that you want to clean out. Uh, and so just scrape, 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 and I don't scrape too hard or too deeply. I, I like to preserve as many of the spaghetti strands as I can. But you see, this is very easy to clean away. And I'll clean the other one and I'll be right back. Now, you can just fluff this out with a fork and, and clean it out that way, but I find this to be easier. I cut them in half, and once again, you can cut them in the other direction uh, for longer strands. But see, we've got some of those strands that are going in the other direction, and I'm going to pull those out. And I just sort of bend it backwards, and it, it fluffs and loosens everything as you go. To me, they just come out much easier that way. And you really don't want to overcook this because you want a little texture left in these strands and um, about an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes is the most I've ever cooked one some people do them in the microwave um, I never have so I, I don't think I can give you directions but I've heard that 12 minutes does it can't swear to that but see how easy these come out and we're just gonna Break them off into the bowl. Doing the second one here. And you might find a couple of hard spots. You want to leave those with the skin. Uh, especially on the ends. Sometimes they don't fluff out very well. And if it's not overcooked, they're not real fragile. But if they're overcooked, it can be kind of mushy. So be a little careful. And this is half of it. I'll show you what we've got. And I, I kind of go through 
make sure that it can be separated make sure I don't have any hard spots now if you want a little bit longer strands you can just use the half not cut it into quarters and you see I'm pulling away kind of gently to sort of loosen and fluff it up and see all that wonderful stuff you just want to uh, take a fork and scrape it all out and then I'll show you how much we have at the end and here you go then that look good according to how many people you're having and how you serve it this could serve between four and eight people four for a main dish eight for a side dish I'm gonna show you a side dish recipe today but you can do almost anything with this that you can do with pasta and you can either use it now or you can cook it the day ahead and cover it and keep it in the fridge this is a very quick and easy side dish uh, and my family loves it because my family mostly eats low carb uh, and and this sort of satisfies that craving for pasta so that's a half a stick butter and a quarter cup olive oil yes I use both and I've got it I need to probably turn it down just a little bit I don't want the butter to scorch but I do kind of want to get it brown or at least let it start to brown I'm adding a heaping teaspoonful that's actually probably a tablespoonful of powdered garlic I'm not using fresh garlic on purpose this is done pretty quickly and I don't want any big chunks of garlic in it when it's done that's just my preference with this dish so we're gonna drop the uh, spaghetti squash in and I did let it drain there's not usually a lot of liquid but I did let it drain and if you're cooking for fewer people you can use just half of it now and freeze the other half you just want to be careful thawing it because you don't want to break it up too much so we're gonna stir it around I want to coat it coat all the strands with the oil and you can add a little more olive oil if you need to but I think I've got enough I don't want it swimming and then a healthy pinch of salt this won't have a lot of flavor if you don't salt it so don't skimp and we'll taste it again right before we serve it and then I'm adding my red pepper flakes you can use black pepper you know I just think red pepper flakes is better in this dish it adds a little oomph then I'm adding a pinch of parsley and if you um, have fresh parsley that would be better I have some dried parsley and I'm gonna use that and you could add some rosemary you could add some basil you can add anything you want spaghetti squash takes on the flavors you add I keep promising myself I'm gonna use this in carbonara but I haven't done it yet I'll let you know when I do so stir it around get your salt and your pepper and your parsley distributed through it you see this is why you don't overcook it it would be mush I'm sprinkling some freshly grated Asiago cheese you can use Parmigiano Reggiano not too much but you could put this in a pan cover it in a lot of cheese and bake it spaghetti squash is a blank palette and you can paint it with any flavors you like I'm gonna cover this low heat 10 minutes it'll be hot all the way through then I'll show you what we've got a little more fresh cheese and a little bit of parsley and this is just perfect see that looks just like spaghetti and no it doesn't taste exactly like spaghetti it does have a mild vegetable flavor but not overpowering and you can do so many things with this and it is low carb and it's healthy uh, and good you know that's a great combination so I'm going to eat this as an appetizer. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. I hope to see you again tomorrow. And hey, I hope you try this. And you know they're pretty easy to grow, just like any other winter squash.